do it. So I'm going to open with a confession. I don't love Latch, which makes me a weird person to maybe give this talk, but I think a lot about Latch, and I have a lot of feelings about it, as my poor roommate knows. <laughs> first things first, though. If you want to make an apply from scratch, who was first to invent the universe? And if you want to organize some information, you have to invent reality. I've got five minutes, so you're just going to have to go with my definition. Um, <laughs> number one, there is no objective reality, and if there is, it's impossibly complex to compare. Two, we create structures that allow us to understand and survive whatever it is. Three, we experience life through these created structures, and they are our reality. Four, everything we know exists in these structures. Good? Yeah. All right, so latch. <coughs> That's Richard Saul Werman's five ways to organize information, location, alphabet, time, category, and hierarchy. And we probably all have encountered it. When I first encountered it, I thought of it as sort of a sorting machine where you could shove in chaos, and out would come these beautiful, <laughs> organized, <laughs> navigable, understandable piles of stuff. But it doesn't work if you use it like that. Um, and so I was like, really confused. Like, what is latch? Why? Doesn't it make sense? <laughs> Why do these things overlap and intersect in stupid ways? And how come it doesn't address meaning like I want it to? And how come everyone else thinks this makes sense? <laughs> What's wrong with me? So I decided I needed to do some serious thought about these letters. What do they mean? How should I be using them? Um, how do they fit in with my understanding of reality? Um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought, but there's another slide coming up. Um, <laughs> I think these ones are easy. Location and time, that is, the way a thing, tangible or intangible, fits into the structures of space and time. We've got that, okay. But now it gets complicated. Um, so the next one is hierarchy. So that's when things of a kind um, are organized along some sort of scale. Uh, it used to be called Continuum, which was a much better name, I think, even though it doesn't make a clever acronym. <laughs> um, alphabet seems really simple because we all know the alphabet, but you have to answer first question of alphabetical by what? And I think that's a really complicated question. Um, and then the worst one for me is category. Because it seems really simple too, that's like kind or type, but that's so many things that how can you just make that be equal to alphabet? Um, I realized that part of the problem, and I talked to Dan about this, he was so kind of listening to me, is that I was using latch wrong. It's not a sorting machine. It's sort of a tutorial for pushing on things to see how they are tethered to the structures that make our reality. So we can figure out what they mean. The problem is latch doesn't address all of these types of structures. Um, Peter Morville in his new book, oh, no, I'm on a tennis line. Um, so they, the reason they intersect is because so do the structures. So that makes sense to me now. Like, we have to intersect because so do the structures. But Latch doesn't address all of the structures that organize our world. And Peter Morville in his new book says, well, maybe that's because there's infinite ways we could be doing this. I think that maybe that's true, but in the same way that there are infinite ways, or not infinite, the same way that the coast of Great Britain is infinitely long, um, that's true, but at some point we need to agree on some sort of definition um, so that we can talk about it. Because the conversations we need to have are really important. Because the structures that build our reality aren't real, except that we keep using them. They're only real because we keep over and over using them. And um, oftentimes we're not aware we're doing so. And as information professionals, if we're organizing things by structures that we're not looking for, we can be doing some real harm. I think the most powerful and the most pernicious structures that we live by and that create our reality aren't addressed by latch. And so there's a real danger that we're ignoring them when we create structures and therefore upholding them in the things that we make. I think that the piece that's missing here is we really need to be looking towards other disciplines to first understand how we made reality in the first place so that we can then understand how we're upholding it and what reality we're creating for the future that we can make sure that when we're pushing on things to understand what things they are, we're pushing in all of the directions that really matter and make sense so that the things we build build a better world. Obviously, this is a conversation that needs to be more than five minutes, but I think I've plowed through it. Um, and I hope that it's a conversation people are willing to keep having because it's something that I think about a lot. Thank you.